Okay. Here we go, guys. <laughs> How to get your first million dollar listing. I've been wanting to do this for a minute because I got a lot of agents that, uh, that I coach that knock down million dollar listings and they're doing it in markets that don't have million, million dollar listings every day. Um, you know, to some markets, million dollar listing is like a high luxury listing. And in some markets, it's literally the average price point. So it's all relative to your market, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, let's just crush the limiting beliefs right now that if you're in a smaller market, you can't get million dollar listings. All right. That's, that's first and foremost. I got agents. I mean, I got, a, I got an agent, Shane Noblin. You guys know him probably. I mean, his average price point is 300. I mean, he's in a small town, North Carolina. He's been knocking down million dollar listings for the past year. Um, doing exactly what I'm talking about today. Um, Amber Everett in Chattanooga. She did a $3.5 million deal. She's in Chattanooga. Um, a guy that I coach um, in Navarre, he just set the record for the most expensive sale uh, on Navarre. On Navarre Beach, it was $5.5 million. Um, Navarre has got some, you know, some million dollar homes. Some of these other markets don't. So here's my point, guys. Whether you're in one of these markets that has tons of million dollar houses, you know, a million might be the average price point or something, or if you're in a small market where the price point is two, three, four, five hundred thousand, it does not matter. There are million dollar homes in every market. There may be more some and others than other. And there's definitely some weird markets where <laughs> there's probably like, no million dollar homes. I get it. However, this is relative because there is an upper price point. I mean, let's just say hypothetically, there's a market where there are no million dollar homes. It's that small. And the average price point, I would imagine in a market like that, it's what, like 150, 200, something like that. Well, there's still, there are homes there that are five, six, seven, 800 guaranteed. Okay. So it's all relative. And, and what you want to do you know, as you, as you work through your career, there's level one, level two, level three. Level one, you're just trying to get your systems in order. Just trying to figure this thing out. Level two, you're, you're expanding and you're ascending. Like you're literally increasing price point. You're, you're, you're going after invest, you're, you're, you're client ascension. Like you, you've got lead gen in place. You've got retention. You've got conversion. You're good. Your systems are in place. Nobody ever forgets you. Level three is, is going all in with those things that work and also client ascension, which is what we're going to talk about today. And I think it's funny because not a lot of people talk about client ascension in, uh, in real estate. I don't really hear a lot of coaches talking about it or uh, agents or people uh, uh, on social media trying to teach agents. You know, they talk about lead gen, they talk about social media, they talk about conversion, kind of. You know, but there's that pillar of ascension and uh, it's crucial. You know, it was great for me. That's literally how I got to a million dollars a year. Because if you guys, if you guys remember, you know, I sold a hundred properties starting in 2014. It wasn't until 17 that I hit a million dollars, but it was still just a hundred properties. What I did was I increased my price point. So that's what I say. At that point, I was a level two agent. I had my systems in place. It was working. I'm doing 100 deals. Now I have to increase my price point along with the other factors that are included with client ascension. Got it? Cool, cool. So next week, I'm doing the four-day Set More Listing Appointments Challenge again. <laughs> and the agents that took it last time are reaching out left and right. They're getting listings left and right. Um, so if you didn't do that last time, definitely do it this time. And for those who are watching this, I'm going to give you a 50% discount on the VIP tickets. Okay. So all you have to do is go to setmorelistingappointments.com and go get a VIP ticket and just put the code 50 off at checkout and it'll give you 50% off. And that's going to give you also a 30 day free trial of Red X, which is the entire bundle of Red X, all of their products you get, 
for 30 days for free. Um, that's unlimited leads for nothing. So you get a full week of training with me, VIP, which is an hour early each day, asking questions, hearing other answers, then the training for four days. Like come in there and tell me where you're getting stuck in your business. This is an opportunity for you to get high level coaching for literally pennies. Then you're going to get unlimited leads for 30 days. All right. Cool. Um, so put in the chat. I don't even know if you guys are interested in this. Like who's excited about getting their first million dollar listing, um, changing their career forever. And if you're already getting million dollar listings, like what about a $10 million listing? Eh, what about a $20 million listing? It's all relative to your market and where you are in your career. The million dollars is just kind of like, you know, it's just like, let's take it to the next level is what that means. If you're already there, let's go to 10 mil. Let's use the, you'll use the principles that I'm teaching today and go to 10 mil. All right. All right, let's get it. Because that's what it's all about, guys, is next level. I'm going to recommend a book to you guys. Uh, where is it? I think my wife has it. She's reading it now. I'm going to recommend, rent a bo uh, recommend a book to you guys. It's not a real estate book, but it is one of the best books I have ever read. It's called 10X is Easier Than 2X. Oh my God, you have to read it. You have to read it. See, everybody on this call, I would imagine you're wanting to take your business to the next level, okay? The reason why you're plateaued and you're struggling right here is because you're, you're, you're stuck to the 80% of your actions that got you where you are, but it's holding you back from getting to the next level. Every time you plateau, you have to identify the 20% that's actually working and make that your 80%. And that's actually step two of leveling up. Step one is appreciating where you are and how far you've come. See, what we do is, is we look at where we are and we compare ourselves to where we feel like we should be because we compare ourselves to other people, et cetera. And then we start to devalue where we are and how far we've come. In 2000, I'll tell you a quick story. In 2014, the first year I did a mil, uh, 100 deals, I did 600K in commissions. I did 600K. The next year, I had this grand plan to go to a million dollars. I put this whole thing in place. I'm going to do this many calls, have set this many appointments, do this many letters, uh, get this many listings and make a million dollars. Well, in 2015, I started to execute the plan. And by about March, I realized I'm going to hit 600 again, which, by the way, is $50,000 a month. I mean, I'm a, I'm a roofer from Alabama, like. And, but however, I was comparing myself to where I feel like I should be, which is a million dollars a year, which is like 85,000 a month. And so then I became frustrated and disappointed with where I was. And I'm like, looking back, I'm like, dude, you were making 600 K in Alabama, um, living good. Um, and I, and I devalued where I was and how far I had come. My gosh. And it's a dangerous game that we play, comparing ourselves to where we feel like we should be and to other people. So you have to be grateful for where you are and how far you've come, and then sit back and identify the 20% that's actually moving the needle. Let go of the 80%, and that's the part nobody wants to do. That's the part nobody wants to do, and that's why most people stay where they are until they die. Because they're unwilling to let go of what got them where they are, because they feel like they let go, they're going to lose all that momentum. So... I'm just going to uh, recommend the book, 10X is Easier Than 2X. And that's just a little, that's just a gift from me to you. Because when you read that, you're not going to be able to put it down. It's going to change your whole life. Uh, but that, but the reason I'm saying that is because that's what this is with taking it to the next level. You say you want to go to the next level. You say you want a million dollar listing. But you might have to let go of a few things to do that. All right. All right, cool. So what we're going to cover today is I'm going to show you guys how, how to get these million dollar listing leads. Number one, that's the first thing I'm going to show you how to get these million dollar listing leads. And these leads will cost you anywhere from a dollar to $2 and 50 cents. Okay. A dollar to $2 and 50 cents. Type yes. If you want to learn how to get listing leads for a dollar to $2 and 50 cents. Okay. Cause that's what we do in today. All right, 
The second thing I want to cover with you is how to approach, how to approach these leads. Okay. That's crucial. That's important. So that that's all we're really going to have time to cover today. Um, so hopefully that'll at least get you moving in the right direction, understanding what you need to do, how you need to structure it, how you need to approach the leads, and then you can go take advantage. All right, cool. Before we get into, oh, people are asking all kinds of stuff. Let me get in the chat real quick. All right, so. All right, so the challenge. You're going to use the coupon code at the VIP checkout. Set more listing appointments. Set more listing appointments. Man, who wants to set more listing appointments? I got a four-day training next week. Setmorelistingappointments.com and use the code 50 off for the VIP checkout. And come blow your business up with me next week. You're going to get a 30-day free trial with Red X. My God. All right. Hello. I thought it was going to be marketing million dollar listing. We can talk about that, Jan. But no, we're talking about how to get your first million dollar listing. We're not going to be talking about marketing the listing, but you're welcome. I'm going to take maybe two or three questions at the end. So you're welcome to put your hand up, Jan, and ask that question. You can ask anything you want. I'm going to take two or three questions at the very end. Okay. So happy to get into that with you. All right. First, I want you to kind of realize, let's talk about like where the market is right this second and kind of where the opportunity is, all right? All right, so this article came up. Uh, bam, right? This article came up. 40%, I want you to think about this. 40% of US homeowners couldn't afford their home if buying it today. That means like the current home that they're in, that they bought 10, five years, even two or three years ago, that same house that they're in right this second, if they were, if they were trying to, if they, if they didn't own it and they were trying to buy it today, they wouldn't be able to afford it. They would not get approved for the loan. Okay. So, so when I see that and I think about that and I look at, well, first off, it makes me think, okay, well, 40% of homeowners couldn't afford their home if buying it today. Well, that means, number one, they're definitely not fixing to buy a home if they couldn't even afford the one they're in if they bought it today. They're definitely not going to sell their home. That's the first thing I think about is like, they're not going to sell, 40% of homeowners are not going to sell their home because they couldn't, they can't afford to buy a home. So they're definitely going to stay where they are. And this is the golden handcuffs we all, we all talk about. So, so when I start to think about that, I think, oh, well, what if they are, um, you know, what if they get in trouble? What if they get in trouble and they have to sell it, right? So then you go to mortgage delinquencies. You go to mortgage delinquencies. Let me zoom in. You go to mortgage delinquencies and you're like, well, they ain't in trouble. It's literally the lowest it's ever been. Yeah. All, right, sure. All, right. Yeah. Sure. Bam. All right, it's the lowest it's ever been. Like we're down under 4%. Like going back to 1979, uh, let's see, all loans past due is in the blue. Uh, kind of hover between four and a half and six. Dip down under four for a second there uh, in the mid 90s. Um, it got it got way up there, 10% during 2008. Then we had that blip during COVID. And now we're down under four. I mean, literally the lowest it's ever been right now. People aren't in trouble. Why aren't they in trouble? They're not in trouble because, yeah, cost of living's higher and to the mortgage rates are higher. But you got to remember, these people are sitting on two or 3% mortgage rates on their home. Their mortgage is extremely low right now. Their current mortgage they're paying is really low. You know, it's, it's the mortgage that they got three, four years ago when rates were at 2%. Okay, that's why mortgage delinquencies are so low, right? Because there's a very, 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 very low percentage of people who, who bought at these higher rates. You know, we had... Uh, 
what do we have? 4 million transactions last year and not all of those got loans, right? The, the number is like 30 plus percent paid cash. Um, a lot of these are, um, you know, FHA, VA, uh, USDA, um, uh, et cetera. So the number gets even lower of the amount of homes that are out there that are actually sitting on these 7% rates. All right. Um, all right. So, so when I think about this, okay, when I think about this, I'm just, I'm, I'm seeing so much opportunity here. Okay. So where's the opportunity? The opportunity is, is okay. The 40% of homeowners can't buy. Okay. Like we need to pay attention to this if we're a real estate agent, because when I got back in the game in 2008, what I did was I looked for opportunities just like this one, just like this one. And the opportunity was to represent buyers who actually were sellers. So I went after sellers to buy foreclosures. Think about that. I went after sellers to buy foreclosures at cheaper prices. Uh, and then they sold their current. So they, they would buy a foreclosure at half off. that was nicer than the property they had. And they would sell the property they had. Um, or they would keep it and rent it and, you know, whatever. But, um, but my, my theory was, okay, there's a lot of foreclosures. These foreclosure agents are making 40 grand a month. I'm jealous of that. Uh, however, I feel like this is where the market's going to go. Foreclosures are going to go away. And the people that I get to buy the foreclosures will sell those same properties at higher prices in three years, upgrade to something else and refer me three or four people. And when these foreclosures go away, the banks aren't going to be referring anybody to the foreclosure agents. And those agents are literally going to go away and die. And it's so funny because exactly what I thought would happen, happened. 80% of the foreclosure agents are literally, I never hear their name. Like when the foreclosures went away, they were, they were like, they, they retired or whatever. Um, the same thing is happening right this second. Okay. Kind of in reverse. Where I see an opportunity is with million dollar and up properties. And again, that's relative to your market, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, but again, I've got agents in markets where the average price is 300 and they're knocking down that like Shane is closing one or two million dollar and up properties a month. Okay. So don't make the excuses. And, and speaking of excuses, there was an agent on my call yesterday, yesterday, and He's in, he's in this smaller town, uh, but it is high-end luxury. And he was like, Ricky, I love the upgrade strategy you have, you know, to call the seller to see if they want to upgrade. to the she, He said, the problem is there's no inventory. I was like, all right, what market are you in? And I Googled it right there on the Zoom and screen shared and just hit Zillow. And there's 48 properties for sale. And these are all like two to $20 million properties. This is high-end luxury properties. This is a small but high-end market. Um, I'm like, bro, see, here is the problem. We, we start to, we start like, where did we get the information that there's nothing for sale? Where did we get that information? How did we make that up and then start to believe that based on what? There's no, like the facts are here. There's 48 properties for sale. So what we do, like I hear agents talk about, you know, you know, I would be crushing it or whatever, but the market's slow or there's just no deals happening. And I'm like, okay, let's look in your MLS. We go to their MLS and there's just like 50 to 100 deals closing every single day or whatever. Closing's happening every day. So what we do is we get into these, uh, we, 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 we look for roadblocks and we run up against them. And, and we start to believe, I don't even know how we get this data. Like, there's nothing for sale. There's 48 properties for sale. Anyway, um, we have to get out of this, guys. We got to get out of this saying what the market is when it's nothing even closely remote to what you're saying. Okay? Um, let's look at facts. Let's look at facts. And let's, let's base our strategy on facts. Now, if 40% of homeowners can't buy homes, okay, I'm here to build a business, all right? I'm here to build a business. Now, as a real estate agent, I can't control affordability. 
you know, the, some, some people, um, some haters in the comments will talk smack about real estate agents and like we can control, uh, affordability. Like we can't control prices, affordability, interest rates, uh, construction costs, inventory, you know, multiple offers, if listings sell, if they don't, we, we can't control anything when it comes to the market and it doesn't matter. Okay. Now, some people will say, well, you should be trying to help first-time homebuyers who can't afford homes, okay? Well, that's not a good business move, right? And if, and if you don't take advantage of the best opportunities in your market for your business, then guess what? Now you're letting your family down. Now you're not providing the best life that you can for those around you. So we, we got to be careful with our mindsets around everything right? We're here to build a business and we have to look for opportunities. That's our job. Okay. The world's going to be just fine. Okay. We're never, we're not going to save the world today and we can't control it anyway. So let's build a business. Um, when I think about 40% of homeowners can't afford a home, then I immediately have to think about, okay, who can afford a home? All right. Oh, let's see who can afford a home. Okay. Well, Millionaires can afford a home. Millionaires, multimillionaires. Now, if you look up the stats on that, we're at an all-time high when it comes to the number of millionaires and multimillionaires in the country. Okay, so who can afford homes? Millionaires, multimillionaires, people that have high net worth and can pay cash. These people can pay cash for properties. Now they may or may not want to. That's beside the point, right? This second, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help you identify where opportunities are in the market for you to exploit in your business, so that you can go crush it. All right. The name of the book was 10x is easier than 2x. Yeah, of course. Surveys are weird, right? Uh, it was a survey of 3,000 people. Yeah. I, li listen. Like every survey is literally a sample of uh, people, even the political polls and all this stuff. It's literally just a small sample group of, uh, of people, all right? It can literally be taken with a grain of salt, but there's some legitimacy there. I mean, wouldn't you agree that there's a lot of homeowners out there that are sitting on two, 3% mortgage rates that bought when prices were 40% lower that wouldn't get approved right now? The forty percent may or may not be right on target, but I would say they're move, they're in the right moving in the right direction. Okay. Um. So this is the first thing I want you to realize is that, yeah, inventory is going to stay low, right? People aren't in trouble to sell their homes. Delinquency rates are low as they've ever been. Okay, right there, tying for all time lows. Um, they're not in trouble. Why are they not in trouble? Because their mortgage payments are so low because they sit on two or 3% rates. Inventory is not about to shoot through the roof. Is inventory higher? Yes. Is it anywhere close to where it was pre-pandemic? No. Will we get there? I don't think so because it I think it would take years to get there. And by then we're definitely going to be going down on rates. You know, everybody thought even the feds were saying they were going to go down on rates this year. Um, and, and then they changed that entire tune and now there, it's it's there's a longer tail, which is what I wanted. I wanted them to have a longer tail on on uh, on rates coming down. Why? Because it would have created a frenzy, and inventory would have went from bad to worse, and we'd have been in the same boat that we're in that we were in. It, it needs to stay where it is for a little bit longer. Let's let inventory get up a little bit higher. Let's flush out some of the buyers that can that can actually buy it during this market, and that'll prevent. An even bigger wave. See, the longer they wait, the more buyers that buy, the, the, the less the wave hits on the back end because those are the people that would have bought if they would have went down on rates now, if that makes sense. All right. I like this market because it offers a lot of opportunity and it's just priming up for a massive rush when rates do finally come down. I hope you guys are excited about that. Type yes if you're excited about the market and the opportunity to just build right now. I mean, it's just so, I mean, like this, I, oh man, this is, this is the best I've ever seen it, honestly. And when, and when everything flips, the people that have been putting in the work in right now, your business is going to 4X, 5X, 6X.
Okay. Let me. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to show you guys four pillars, five step listing process. Let me get in here. Where is my board? There we go. There we go, right there. Do, 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 do. Boom, boom. Got stragglers coming in. Let's see. Go right there, right there. All right, all right, all right. Cool. All right. Just let me know in the uh, chat if you can see my screen. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Cool. So. All right. So when you think about building a business, okay? When you think about building your business, your real estate business, really any business, right? There's four, four pillars, okay? What are they? The first one is lead gen, okay? Um, I'm going to go way deeper, way deeper on all of these uh, and the challenge next week, okay, about what lead gen is, how to measure lead gen, you know, all that good stuff, okay? Number two is lead conversion, okay? Also, going deeper on lead conversion, okay? But basically, this is day one, two, three, and four honestly client retention and client ascension okay this is what we're talking about today ascension getting to a million dollar listing all right if i if i go mute for some reason if my battery dies on my mic y'all just unmute and tell me and i'll Throw another battery in. This this mic has been going for like two or three weeks. Okay, so this is where this is what we're going to talk about today: client ascension. Okay. All right. So there's there's four ways, right, to incorporate client ascension into your business. Okay. Today we're talking about increasing your price point. Your average, your average price point. Okay. Increasing your average price point. And this is kind of level three agent, right? Right. Level one or is getting these systems in place. Level one, getting these systems in place. Level two, getting these systems in place on top of these systems. Okay. And level three is listing mastery. Okay. I cover all this in my coaching program. Okay, the other four ways of client ascension, don't have time to get into that today. What we want to focus on is increasing your average price point and getting that first million dollar listing. All right. All right. Cool. So as, so as we think about, right, a million dollar listing. Okay, as we think about you know, let's say, let's say your average price point has been 500,000, right? And we want to increase that to a million dollars. Okay. So let's talk about the listing process really quickly. And I'm going to show you guys how to get million dollar listing leads for a dollar up to $2 and 50 cents. And then we're going to cover how to uh, approach these leads. All right. All right, 
there's a five-step listing pro conversion process, right? Listing conversion process. I call, the, I call this the five C's. Okay, we're only going to cover the first two because that's all the time that we have. Okay, the first C of the listing conversion process is collect. Collect targeted seller data. Okay, collect targeted seller data. Um, we're going to cover this. How to get million dollar listing leads. Okay, then we're going to cover this, right? What's the second C? Comf uh, confront them, them with value. Ah, so this is what we're going to cover today. All right, let me let these people in. Every time I turn around. Cool, cool, cool. So at the end, uh, I'll take a couple. I see questions in the comments. I will uh, answer questions and stuff. What's the 30 day Red X code? Um, if you go to setmorelistingappointments.com and use the code 50 off at checkout for the VIP ticket, all VIPs get a 30 day free trial with Red X, a complete bundle of all their, all their products. Okay. This is the, there's a five step. There's, there's three more C's, but we're not, we don't have time to cover these today. We're working on collect targeted seller data and confront them with value. Okay. How to get them, how much we're going to pay and how we're going to approach these leads. Okay. All right. So when we think about, and, and I know a lot of you are like, oh no, we're talking about cold calling here. All right, let me break that down really quickly. It doesn't matter where you get your leads from, okay? Lead source. Doesn't matter where you get your leads from. Guess what? You have to talk to them. You got to talk to them. Okay? Now, if you want to build the fastest growing business, real estate business in town? What do you have to do? Well, you have to do the opposite of what everybody else does. What does everybody else do, okay, right? They create content and what do they do? They create content, put it in the comments, okay? They create content and what do they do? And Brian, I, it didn't freeze. I didn't reveal the, la the last three C's because I don't wanna overwhelm you with information. We're just talking about the first two today collect the data, confront them with value, okay? Fill in the blank. What does every agent, right? Most agents, most every agent, what do they do? Create content and fill in the blank. What do they do? They create. Oh, I, I muted everybody. If you were trying to say anything, you got, oh, there it is. There it is. Aileen, Aileen got it. They, they create content and wait. They create content and wait. That's what every other agent's doing. Well, guess what? If you do what every other agent is doing, then guess what you're going to have? You're going to have what every other agent has, which is what? An average business. That's what you're going to have because you're doing what everybody else does. See, agents that create content, they do letters, they do social media, they do YouTube, they do, um, what else do they do? 
whatever it is they do, they, they, they buy leads, they pay for leads, they buy Zillow, they do pay-per-click, all that stuff, okay? They're, they're, they're buying stuff or they're sending stuff or they're creating videos. They put it out there and then what do they do? They wait. They wait, all of them. That's what the majority of agents do, okay? Well, when I was coming up, when I was coming up in the business, I wanted my business to grow faster than every other agent's business in my market. So I didn't have the luxury to create content and wait like everybody else. The way that you build your business faster than every other agent is you don't create content and wait. You collect targeted seller data, and then you confront them with value uh, at, at a very high frequency, at a very high volume. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, okay, what does it come down to? Right here. This is what it comes down to right here. Your, whatever your lead source is, you got to talk to them. This is the end of the road for lead gen, talking to people. Okay, so that, that equals a conversation. That's a conversation, okay? The more conversations I have and the better I get at being a conversationalist and understanding how to, you know, here's the thing, guys, how to, how to help people understand. Okay, Ricky, we can't see what you're writing. You can't see what I'm writing? You can't see what I'm writing? It's not the clearest. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it, like, maybe the internet, like, did something. It, it's the font point thickness, I think people are struggling with. I see it just fine. Okay. But anyway, your content's this, excellent, though. Thank you. This is, this is, this, is, this is conversations, right? That's conversations. Okay. And the problem is, here, let me let me go let me go up to my to my thing from yesterday with my group, right? This is Mount just enough, and this is where everybody is right here. This is where all you guys are. You're right here, and you can see Mount more than enough right here. This is Mount more than enough. You can see it, and you're like, oh, it looks great up there, right? But what you do is you start to venture down because you want to get there, but you start to venture down, and down here is the valley of not enough. And what happens is, is you start going down there, you make a few calls, a few, and, and a few people are mean, not because they're mean people, but because you don't know how to communicate and you're unwilling to go through what you got to go through to learn how to communicate with people. So you get down here just a little bit and you find a little resistance. And what do you do? You run right back here and you stay right here. Can't do that. You got to go through here before you can get up here. And this, this is the problem with people making calls and understanding lead gen. Look, with lead gen, you got to talk to them. You have to get better at having conversations and, and creating likeness within you for them immediately. You have to get good at that skill, right? And that's the first part of bringing value. We'll get into that. I'm going to get into that with confront them with value. There's two parts to confront, confront them with value. I want to get into both parts so that you fully understand. And if you guys think this is good, wait till the challenge next week. I'm going to be going off. Okay. So where am I here? Okay. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Collect targeted seller leads, lead sources. Okay. The fat, I just want to just reiterate here about building a business that grows faster than the rest of the agents. Because, I mean, put a yes. Put a yes in the, in the, in the comments if you want your business to grow faster than the rest of the agents in your market. Okay. Okay. You're, you guys are saying yes. All right. You're saying yes. But what my question is, is are you willing to do what it takes to make that happen? Because it only comes down to one thing. Conversations. Con ver say shuns. Can you read that? Is that good enough? This is all it comes down to. I'm going to cover Lee Jin um, next week in the challenge, right? What it actually means. 
what it actually means, how to do, how to, how the whole thing comes back and, and all the different data points you need to look at. But this is what it's all going to come down to, right? Are we talking to how many leads are we getting? Um, um, what is the uh, interest level of the leads, right? And how many conversations are we having at what frequency? That's lead gen. Period. End of story. I don't care what this is. If you want to get Zillow leads, if you want to buy seller leads, if you want to, you know, do postcards and wait, if you want to do YouTube, I don't care what you do. I'm just telling you, if you're posting and putting out content and waiting, you're going to have an average business. Even the people who do YouTube really well, there's agents that do it really, really, really well. I know a guy that does $100 million worth of volume on YouTube. Guess what? He will tell you to your face, 99% of those are buyers, and he has 30 buyer, um, buyer agents. I don't want that business. I'd rather sell $80 million by myself because I've leveraged listings, and my business is 80-20. You guys understand that if you focus, if you focus 100% of your efforts on listings, twenty percent of your business will be buyers, and you will be at an eighty twenty. You can't afford to 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 try to get buyer leads. Because if you try to get buyer leads, then this goes from 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, even 60%. You don't want that. You want 80, 20. This is the sweet spot. 80% listings, 20% buyers. And the only way to achieve that is to focus 100% of your efforts on listing activities. Okay. Is that the business you want? Type a yes. If you want an 80-20 business, listings to buyers. If you want your business to grow faster than every other agent in your market, then you have to be the one initiating the conversations. See, everybody's sitting around putting out content and waiting on people to call them or reach out to them. That creates an average business. If you want your business to grow faster than every other agent who's sitting around waiting on leads, then you have to be the one that initiates the conversations so that you can have more conversations than the people that are just waiting on conversations to happen while they have an average business. And they're probably happy with an average business. They're probably happy with an average business. And if they're happy, I'm happy for them. But I want a massive business. Some of you guys may be happy with an average business, and I do. I am not going to hate on that. I I could have a bigger coaching business, right? I'm happy where I am. Okay, so let's break down how to get these leads, these million dollar leads, uh, and the price we're going to get them at, and then we'll talk about how to approach these leads. One million dollar listing leads. All right, cool. All right. So the first thing we got to realize about a lead is all right, what is a lead? Okay. Well, a lead is just a human. Lead equals human in the market some people may be like oh no about that yeah every human in your market is going to buy or sell a home they have potential even the ones that are not of age to buy yet they have parents that'll buy even people who are renters know people and can refer people to you that will buy and sell every single human is a lead now we can't talk to every single human can't talk to them all. So what do we have to do? We have to narrow it down. We have to we have to narrow it down to the highest quality, right? And right here, that's why I say collect, right? I'll blow it up. Collect targeted, 
targeted, targeted, targeted seller leads because we can't talk to all of them. We don't want to focus any of our efforts on going after buyers because that's going to increase our, uh, our ratio from 80-20 to 50-50 or 60-40, right? And by the way, the buyers you get when you focus 100% on listings are sellers who sold and now are buying the best clients in the world, or they're people that want to buy your listing. They saw a sign, they saw it on Zillow, they call you directly, or it's a referral from one of your clients. All of those are high quality buyers. At the peak of my biz, at the peak of my business, at the peak of my business, I was uh, I was showing property. This is at the very peak. I was showing property three to five times a month on average. It's not a lot. And the, uh, they weren't driving me all around town. They knew exactly what they wanted. Why? Because I built my business the right way, the most efficient way. I didn't have to have a team. People are like, how do you sell 100 properties a year as a single agent? Because I'm efficient. I'm not going after buyers. And I'm not trying to figure out how to scale my business where I'm giving 50% to a buyer agent who's going to drive me crazy while I'm getting paying for all the leads, giving them all the business. It doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. Team leaders, um, that model doesn't make sense to me. But but I'm empathetic, and I love the ones who have mastered the um, the the team structure because I believe everything works. It just didn't work for me. All right. So we know that leads are humans in the market, anyone, but we want to talk to the most targeted ones. Okay. So what do we do? Red X, okay? Now let's break it down, okay? When you do the uh, the challenge, you get 50% off, okay? So the ch a challenge ticket is 297. So when you use the code 50 off, you're gonna pay 147.50 um, for the challenge. You're gonna get to get on there, VIP, ask me questions, tell me where you're getting stuck in your business. And hear me help other agents get unstuck for four days. Then the second hour each day, um, you're going you're gonna to get the training, which is going to be lead gen, conversion, ascension, and, and retention. You're going to get all that for 147, but you're also going to get 30 free days of Red X. 30 free days of Red X of all their products, which is a $399 savings. So you're paying less than half of that you're getting the Red X and four days with me next week. Okay, now let me break it down. Okay, Geo Leads, Geo Leads Plus. Okay, you get 7,500 property owners of your choice. And you can filter these down to when they bought, if it has a garage, three bedroom, four bedroom, million dollar and up. You can, you can filter these. Oh my God, it's ridiculous. So, so let's so the Geo Leads Plus is only one product. Is only one product of Red X. You're getting with $399, you're getting Geo Leads Plus, Expires Plus for sell by owners, for rent by owners, pre-foreclosures of the triple line dialer and ad builder. Ad builder, you get to run ads on Facebook and Instagram to these owners. They see you on Facebook before you call them. This is ridiculous. Okay. So, so GeoLeads Plus is only one product out of the $399. Let's just say that you, this doesn't like this doesn't include the expires for sell by owners, pre-foreclosures, for rent by owners, all that stuff. Let's just say you get 7,500 property owners for $399. That's being extremely like I'm swaying it towards the negative way to show you how cheap this really is. Okay. When you divide that, that's five cents per lead. Okay, five cents per lead. Okay, that's per contact information. Okay. All right, now it's a 10% pickup rate. This has been tried and true. This is the average across all markets, across thousands of calls. You know, some people will make 200 calls and be like, I talked to eight people. It's like, okay, it's one subdivision, eight people. You know, when you get to 2,000, 3,000, let me know, you're going to be at a 10% pickup rate. So for, for 50 cents, because 5 cents times 10 is 50 cents. Okay, now we're at 50 cents 
per convo. 50 cents per conversation. And remember, <laughs> remember right here, conversations. This is what makes your business grow hyper fast. You're having, com you're having conversations with the exact property owners that you want. You can filter this down to million dollar subdivisions. You can filter it down to expireds that are a million and up. You can filter this down to anything you want. And you're going to have conversations with the exact sellers that you want to have conversations with we'll talk about how to approach them in just a second you're having a, you're having conversations with the exact property owners that you want for 50 cents now what's the conversion going to be let's break it down even further okay because what we want is we want great conversations we want great conversations Okay, so we're not done yet. It's not just, it's not just, oh, 50 cents per conversation, we're done. No, no, let's break it down even further. Okay, when, when I was making calls full time every day, making calls, uh, when I reached the level where I felt really comfortable on the phone, I was converting, when I say converting, I'm saying per conversation to great conversation, one out of two. So my conversion rate was 50%. Right, I would talk to two, and out of the two, one of them would be a really great conversation. Okay, so so when I was comfortable making calls, that fifty cents per conversation actually turned into one dollar per great conversation. I'll say GC for great conversation. So if you're great on the phone, right? If you're great, if you're natural, if you're comfortable, if you if you figured out how to you know, create that instant rapport and likability. You, you, com you confront them with value. You understand how to play the game. You know where to take the conversation. You're listening to your prospect. Then you're going to be at a dollar per great conversation with the exact seller that you wanted to do business with. One dollar. Now, if anybody here can tell me, if anybody here can tell me something better than a dollar not a dollar per lead, not a dollar per conversation, a dollar per great conversation with somebody who is potentially going to do business with me. I'm all ears. And this is what you guys, are. some people are like, oh, you're just about Red X and you just want to push the affiliate and all this stuff. No, this is the best thing I can find. There's, no, I, there's nothing better. It all comes back to conversations. Right? No matter what I do. So why don't I just have conversations with them with the with the the most the qualified people, the people that I want to do business with that own million dollar and up properties? And I can do it so cheaply. And with the triple dialer, I can do it so quickly. Okay. Now let's say you're not great on the phone. Let's say you're not great on the phone. You have you have uh, one out of five. Right? That's a 20% conversion. Let's say you're at a one out of five, okay? Now you're looking at $2.50. $2.50 per great conversation. This is if you're horrible on the phone. This is if you're, this is it. This is it. I, I know a lot of people who aren't that great on the phone. Guess what? They crush it. Why? Because they're willing to make the calls because they want their business to grow faster than any other agent in their market. So they're willing to do what it takes to have more conversations than anyone so they can wrap their business up. But guess what happens? The more conversations they have, guess what happens? The better they get at having conversations and the lower this price gets because their conversion starts to increase. Oh, yeah, it's that good. Now, if you make the calls, there's a chance something good happens. If you don't make the calls, there's zero chance that anything is going to happen with that property owner. You know how many people in my coaching program, guys, um, you're like, they, they come to me and like, you know, before this coaching program, I was, you know, concerned about this or that, or I wasn't, you know, excited about making calls. And, but you know what? I made a couple of calls and I got a listing or I had this great conversation. Somebody wants me to come see their property. And they're like, I get it now, Ricky. All these leads are the same, right? <laughs> 
the Facebook leads, the YouTube leads, the Zillow leads, all the leads are the same. They're humans in the market. You talk to them exactly the same. You have the same conversation with one of these guys as you do a Zillow lead. It's the same convo. It's like, hey, here I am. You know, how are you doing? What is it that I can do for you today? What it is it that you want to do, need to do? Tell me your situation so I can diagnose to figure out what the next step is for you. It's the same for everyone. Okay, so that is how you get the million dollar listing leads. And, and I'm fixing to tell you how to approach them. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. We, this is how you get them, have the conversation, how much per conversation, and how much depends on how good you are on the phone, how much it's going to cost you per great conversation. Okay. Again, setmorelistingappointments.com. Go to the VIP experience. Use the code 50 off. Get 50% off. That's only good for 24 hours. I'm only doing it for you guys on this, on this call. You get 30 days of Red X for free. 30 days. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. All right. Now, how do we approach? How do we approach? The approach. All right. If you already have Red X, just use the code 50 off and get 50% off the challenge. All right. All right, so the approach, this is what we do. I'm trying to think if I wanna write this down or just tell you guys on video about this approach. Yeah, let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back on video. I'm gonna come back on video for this. Bam, bam, there we go. Is, it, is this helping you guys? Type yes if this is is this if this is helping you guys. All right, and listen. Even if you guys don't do the challenge, even if you don't do Red X, hopefully something I said resonated with how you build your business that you can take. You can apply these principles to anything. So it's not about Red X or the challenge. It's about helping you guys transform into the next best version, so you can do what? Let go of the eighty percent that's not getting you where you need to go. All right. So let's talk about um, how to approach these, these million dollar leads. This is what you do right here. This is it. Oh, when um, Christy, we have accountability in, in, the, in my coaching program. Come to the challenge. We have accountability to make calls and stuff. Okay. Um, all right, so so we so we go on Red X, we find the million dollar uh, you know subdivision, the leads, we got it filtered down, we've got our we've got our group, we're ready to call them. All right, what do we do? How do we approach them? Well, this is what you don't do. You don't call them up and say, "Hey, would you consider selling?" Right, and unless you have a buyer that's seriously interested in their property in some form or fashion, like that subdivision or something, do not do the "I have a buyer" either. Right. Here's the best. Here's the best strategy right here that I've seen. This is working like a charm. Um, and my agents are crushing it with this. Um, I talked about confront them with value. OK, so so let's so let's let's break that down into two parts. The first part is your tone in the beginning. So I'm going to break that down. The second part is the reason for your call, the value you're actually giving. So unless you get the first part down, the second part doesn't really matter because the prospect is turned off. The prospect is turned off. They're like, unless you can, you can give them value through your tone, I'll explain. 
they don't care what you're offering them. All right, cool. So an agent on my call yesterday said that whenever they hear I'm a real estate agent, they just say, okay, and click and hang up. I'm like, okay, let's break that down for us. She, she, she wants to get, she, see, what we want to do is start to immediately blame the prospect and say, oh, these people are mean. No, they're not mean. So I want you to understand something. When somebody answers the phone, that is the first positive step towards creating a relationship and doing business with this person, okay? They answer the phone, that's a positive sign, all right? Most people that are negative or mean, they just don't answer the phone. Most people that answer the phone are really nice. And the reason why they turn on you is because they gave you an opportunity to show, you, show them who you are and you blew that opportunity through your nervousness, your shyness, your inexperience, your uncomfortableness, um, your babbling, your, 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 um, your awkwardness, um, all the things that come into play as someone who's new to this. Um, so the first part is getting really good at that beginning, at that beginning of the call to, to, make, to help them feel comfortable because they want to feel comfortable. That's the thing. They want to feel comfortable. Um, but if you, if you come in and make them feel uncomfortable, they're out. Okay, so we have to, that first part of the value is showing them that, hey, we're, we're real and we're not going to try to pull anything on you, right? We're here to help you, right? And that's the tone you got to have. It's something you just have to work on and it doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it takes months and years and even decades to really master that part. A lot of people make calls and they'll run into a, a few people that, that were mean it's, and, and they're like, oh, call, uh, you know, calls don't work and, or I'm not good at this or whatever. And that's exactly what I said about the mountain. Exactly what I said. Where's my mountain? This is what happens with the calls. They, they say, oh, I want to be over here. They start to go down the hill a little bit and, so, and, 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 and they run into a little resistance with a few mean people when it's actually their fault that the person ended up acting mean through their, because they were weird, they were shy, they were weird on the phone. So they retreat and they just go right back to being average. Don't do that. Don't do that, guys. Hit this on head first, conquer this. And what happens is, is you become addicted. You become addicted to this. So many, I have some, I've coached so many agents that were like terrified. And then once they made it, I, I can tell you right now, I can name them. They literally were terrified. I have somebody, this happened in the past. He was terrified two weeks ago. And last week he messaged me and told me how addicted he is to making calls because he picked up three deals. Um, you become addicted to this because you realize this is the motherland. This is the secret to, the, to fast growth. This is it. A lot of people retreat. You know, I, I get it. It's not easy, but God, does it, <laughs> does it multiply your business really fast, short and long-term, especially long-term. Now, the approach. So first off is like the communication part. That is value. The second part is the reason for our call. What's going to be our reason for the call? <laughs> oh, here we go. So you go into Red X, um, you find the million-dollar homes, okay, and you've got them. They're in this area, what ha what not. What you do is, is you find a listing in your market that's bigger and nicer. You find a $2 million one, a 2.5, a three, a 5 million, a 6 million, whatever, 10 million, whatever. And you call them and you say, hey, I see that you're here, right? You've got a three bedroom. Do you need a bigger house? Do you need a four bedroom? Because I got a really nice one right down the road I'd love to show you. Now what happens? What happens is, is you didn't call them like every other agent and try to get them to sell their home or would they consider selling or I have a buyer? No, no, no. You didn't call trying to take something like a listing or take something like their house that they love. No, you didn't do that. You called to offer them something. Now you're being seen as a, as a giver, not a taker. And it's the complete opposite of what they're going to get from 99% of agents. And now you're immediately going to stand out. So if you can hit that first, confronting them with value with the way that you talk to them, which makes them feel comfortable, followed by value that's giving as opposed to taking, then you're in the game. And guess what happens 99% of the time? 
They're not interested in the house that you're offering them, but because you're a giver, not a taker, they do want to do this other deal on the other side of town. And now they're going to open up to you and tell you everything about it because they think you could be the agent for them because of the way you talk. Because of the way you talk. See, agents want uh, leads that are just ready to go. You know, like I want a lead that's just ready to go. It doesn't exist. It only exists through filtering through the leads. Even when you buy Zillow leads and the lead comes in, some of those are like, I'm looking to do something in six months. Now, now those, now those Zillow leads, like I know people that like, they crush it on Zillow. Like I know a lot of agents that crush it on Zillow. Do I want that business and deal with all those buyers? No way. And I definitely don't want to pay that much money to sit around and wait on leads to come in, right? I want to initiate contact because I want my business to grow faster than anybody else's. But I don't, I don't hate on it. Um, but yeah, like I'm like those leads are, you know, could be more ready on a percentage basis than some of these others. But dude, your your volume is so high that you run into you run into way more people. Listen to this. Like I know a guy on Zillow. He uh he sold like eighteen properties last year. All right, and that's all he did with Zillow. So he, so he got 18 leads that converted. Okay, great. But I have people that make calls that did like 50 deals last year that started last year and did like 50 deals in a down market. Um, why? Well, the percentage of leads aren't as motivated to do, any, do something as the Zillow leads, but their volume is way higher. And get this, here's the flip of it. The people that don't want to do anything that you have a great conversation with, they do business with you for the rest of your life. See, the Zillow agent, they're not building up a huge database. See, the only thing between you guys and a million dollars a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. You can have those thousands of conversations over the next couple of years, or you can stretch it out over the course of your life and never even get there. I know agents never even got there, and they died. <laughs> they died. Um, and I know agents that have got there within a couple of years because they were willing to initiate the contact. All right, I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna take a few questions. Uh, if you guys just wanna put your hand up, I'll do two or three before we get out of here. And, um, and we'll do it like that. So just put your hand up on, on the Zoom and I'll call you in and I'll answer two or three and we'll call it a day. John, you're going to have to turn your uh, video on if you want to do a question. Go hey, for can it, you John. See me? Yeah. So do you use, um, for just generic cold calling, you know, every morning, whatnot, do you use this offer approach of potentially offering another property to those oh, higher yeah, end dude. leads? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it should be like the core of your, um, you know, your, your prospecting business right now, because you have to think back when I was doing, back when I was building my business, I could literally call prospect uh, sellers and I could say, Hey, this property sold. Um, is there anything I could do to help you? And that works so good. Why? Because they bought the house, say four years ago, prices were up, say 15% from four years ago and interest rates are still 5%. They bought it at 5% and interest rates were still at 5%. So they could literally upgrade with really no difference in mortgage rate, or there was no real, it was just like easy for people to upgrade back then, right? So I could call people and say, hey, this property sold. Is there something I could do to help you? And it worked so well in that market. But in today's market, when we have 40% of homeowners who wouldn't even be able to afford the home that they're in, and they're not going to move and they're sitting tight, we've got to call with some kind of offer, some kind of urgency, some kind of situation that could potentially interest them. And another way that I look at it too is, is back then when my, my value was that, hey, I'm not trying to sell your house. I'm just seeing if there's something I can do to help you. See, the value is still giving, not taking, right? The value is still giving, not taking. But the difference is, is we're just in a different market with where interest rates and prices are. And I just feel like, uh, I, I, like honestly, the market, the way the market is helped me invent this. And I know it's not like I didn't invent this, you know, this strategy or whatever, but but I did, uh, you know, think of it out of out of my mind and um, started to um, coach this. And like, dude, agents are just crushing it with this approach, and they're not even selling the house that they're calling about. 
it's a, a, the, 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 they're getting listings, but they're not, they're calling with this house, but they, they, that's, it's just, it's just the excuse to talk to the person and show them how giving they are. And then they open up and tell them what they really want to do. And they end up doing a deal. It has nothing to do with the house they called about. Could you potentially sell that house? Sure. It would be like lightning striking me twice at the same time while a shark's biting my other arm. But, um, and you know, what's really cool about this is when it's your listing, you're calling about every single listing you guys get. You should, um, you should look up all the homes that are smaller around it and do this. What does that do? Well, it shows your seller how hard you're working, A. And then B, you, know, you may not sell the listing out of those calls, but you'll pick up 15 more clients. And two of them want to do deals now, and the other 13 want to do deals next year. Right? You're near leveraging. You know? And it's, so, it's, just, it's just it's perfect. Like it's, I can't think of a better way to spend your time outside of this and expireds. Expireds are like so gold because my whole thing with prospecting and conversion is understanding why people are trying to do what they're trying to do. A lot of people have a problem with conversion and I'm like, okay, why, why are the, why is that person selling? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, well, how do you even know what the next step is? You have no idea what their timeline and motivation, you no, nothing. And people are skipping over that part. Um, and so with expireds, they literally give you the story in the first call. It's like, Hey, I see this property was for sale. Whatever happened with that? And they literally tell you, everything. It's, it's like you're a detective and they, 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 now they're your little partner trying to help you solve the mystery of what happened to this property. Um, between those two, like lead channels, I mean, like I wouldn't be doing anything else, you know, and it's so cheap. Like it's literally the cheapest, the best, the highest quality. It's targeted. You can expand. You can grow your business as fast as you want. Does that help? I'm assuming that helps. Brian, go for it. Hey, Ricky, quick question. So I saw in the comments, a lot of people are talking about the challenges of just getting started with the cold calls and you know following through. I, so I was curious, what suggestions might you offer in terms of practicing cold calls, practicing overturning objections, and facing rejection head on? Because I'd say, honestly, like I thrive on rejection now, mm. especially in person. It feels great because it's like, okay, there's the starting point of this relationship. Let's go. Um, yeah. But I too also sometimes struggle just to get started. Like you struggle making the first call of the day and then once you start making calls, it gets easier or what? Just making sure I'm setting the time aside and having a, you know, like a plan of action. Um, and then now I, I, I got HubSpot, so I'm tracking everything. Um, I'm not in any system and I actually I was um, have some employment issues currently. So I'm kind of, flying by the seat of my pants right now. Uh, yeah, I would say that just, you know, really digging in, setting aside the time and saying, okay, the next hour, this is all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, like nothing's going to break. Well, here's me the thing, this. bro. Okay. Here, here's the, here's what you have to do, right? The book that I mentioned in the beginning, 10 X is easier than two X. You please read it. Just, just please read it, bro. Because it's exactly what you're talking about. See the two X mindset guys is incremental increases where we're trying to double our volume. When we're trying to double our volume, we don't really do much different in our business. We just kind of keep working harder at what we're doing. But when you try to go mm -hmm. 10X, well, now that's a whole different game plan. And now we have to literally let go of 80% of what we do that's only 2Xing us. See, 80% of what you do is 2Xing you. And we don't want 2X, we want 10X. And so, so whatever, see, here's the thing, whatever you're doing in that hour that you want to call, you're making that a priority over the calls. Well, that priority over the calls is a 2x action, right? It's, it's part of your 80%. If you want a 10x, then you've got to let go of that 80% and replace it with the 2x. What is your 2x right now? Your 2x is having more conversations with people in your market, right? And building your business, building your brand, expanding your influence, right? More people need to know how great you are. I can tell you're a good agent. Like just in the past 60 seconds, like I can tell, like you would be the kind of guy I would do, I would do a deal with if I were buying or selling a home, like no question. But the problem is, is nobody, you're not talking to enough people to show them that, right? And so that's why our business is small, right? So understand, bro, it's a, it's a, it's a conversation game, but it's, it's only a conversation game to, to establish lifelong relationships 
with these people where they never forget who you are. Right. And that's where, that's where you have to have your systems in place, man. Like you're a level one agent. You're trying to figure out your systems with lead gen, client retention and client convert and, and listing conversion. You're trying to figure, you're still trying to figure that out. Um, so just be fine at the seat of your pants, like you say, and, you know, being all over the place, that's a good thing. Don't look at it as, a, as it's a bad thing. You're trying to figure it out. Okay. But just take a moment every now and then be grateful for how far you've come to where you are and start and, and pick out where that 80% is that's holding you back and throw it in the garbage. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean, bro? I would say so. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, really staying committed. And I, I've come up, so I, I came up with kind of an approach. I live in a relatively small area that I, I canvas by walking ever, everywhere. So I've been in Google Maps. I plot out all of the homes in the area that I think let, should let sell. Me, let, let, let me, I got to get to another question. So if you have another yeah. question, which I don't really, I only want to do one question a piece. No, no, if you I'm have good. another question, just say, my question is, and tell me the question. Um, my question is, you know, how, how thorough should a game plan be for approaching, you know, cold calling and then having a follow up system? Like, do I just get started? Do I figure it out as I go along? Figure it out as you go along. It's going to be different for everyone. Right. And your follow up, okay. right. You should do a weekly email to your entire database on the same day of the week forever. That's how they'll never forget you. Right. But in terms of your follow up of people that say they might buy or sell something soon, that depends everything on what they want to do and why. Right. Go five to 10 questions deep with what they want to do and why listen to them while they're talking, not the, not the voices in your head. Right. About what am I going to say next? Are they going to like me? Are we going to do the deal? Like don't mute all that and listen to them create questions out of what they're saying in front of you. That's how, that's how people are wild guys is when you, you come up with questions out of what they just said, that shows them that you're at the highest level of curiosity about them and that you care about them. And when you do that, it's game over. Good stuff, bro. Uh, we're going into lightning round because I wanted to do a couple questions, but I see a, a bunch of hands. So Irene, come in and just say, my question is, I'm going to give quick answers so we don't take everybody's uh, all day here. Okay. My question is when you're telling the prospect, oh, I have a bigger house, XYZ house, and they say, oh, is that your listing or, or they knew of it and it came off the market? What is your response to them? I guess I'm not understanding the question. So when you call the prospect like and say, okay, I have this house here, a four bedroom. Do you need a, a bigger bed, uh, house? But they already knew it was on the market and now it's Who like an expired list. Why does that matter? Well, they asked me, they got a little annoyed with me. Like, oh, is it your listing? I said, it's not my listing, but it's available. And they go, well, what happened? Why what didn't it sell? So it was so that's expired? What... Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So hold on. So it's an expired. What did you do? Call the seller and the seller said you could still sell it? No, no, I was calling prospects in the area. I had another one and I said to him, okay, well, but, what, we but have why another are you house. offering them an expired listing is what I'm asking. I was asking them if they wanted to buy an a property that was bigger than theirs. Right. But, but, but the property that's bigger than theirs is one that expired. You're saying. Yeah. Why, why are you calling them with an expired listing and you haven't talked to the seller? Why wouldn't you call mm -hmm. them with a house that's for sale? active oh because i yeah it wasn't expired i called the expired i have it the guy i went to see him and it's okay, a okay. That, that's what i was saying did you talk to the seller so the seller oh yes i'm sorry yes yes okay okay, the, okay. that's yeah. what i was asking and you said no okay so so basically it's off market now the seller right. it was expired could, the seller said you could sell it you called uh, another seller who has a smaller property and you said hey would you like to upgrade to the bigger home and they were upset with you about see this is where uh, when, when i run into clients like this um, I kind of give them a little taste of their own medicine, right? And they're and they're like, well, yeah, we knew about that. Um, why didn't you know? Was it your listing and all this? And like, no, no, it wasn't my listing. It expired. I would tell them exactly what happened. Guys, honesty is the very like like it like integrity and honesty are at the very top of anything you should do. So when they ask you that, say, yep, it expired. Here's why. And I talked to the seller, and he said, hey. If I have somebody who wants to buy it, then I'm, I'm welcome to show it. So I'm just asking you, do you want a bigger house? Right. But yeah, um, I would just ask them. Uh, I would tell them. So why didn't it sell? 
the gentleman wasn't, he said he wanted 1.1 million and it looks like he just bought it a couple months ago for 900. And it doesn't look like people in the market who know they want to pay him another 200. So my, if he so just my, so my, I guess, I guess, I guess it's not a bad thing that you're calling about this overpriced off market property. Okay. It's not a bad thing. Okay. At all. What I think I might do is call two or three subdivisions over of people that wouldn't have known about it going on the market and off the market. Right. I think I would call maybe two or three subdivisions over uh, smaller homes, cool. older homes. Right. That would be the first thing is target better people. Right. Number one. Number two. Um, there's plenty of other listings that are priced right. You could be calling people with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So there's two tips for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Joanna. Hi, thank you. My question is, would you use this with for sale by owners? Because they seem a little bit ornery. Um, well, see, with for sale by owners, they're already trying to sell. I know they have intent to sell. So now I'm just trying to get to the bottom of why they want to sell. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of past... At, see, when, like with a cold prospect, it's like, would you like to upgrade to this home? You know, and then you get into a conversation, you realize, oh, they want to sell. And then I, then I immediately go deep into why. And with for sale by owners, where do you know they want to sell? And, and so we can go ahead and dive into the why. And through the why, then we can have another property, you know, in mind. Like if they start to tell us, oh, we're looking to, upgrade want a nicer home whatever oh do you have a, do you already have a house in mind you know oh yeah we already bought it okay well we don't have to offer them the home right or no we're still kind of looking oh well i got this really amazing one i'd love to show you uh down the road so you just have to fill them out every single call is literally you filling this prospect out to see what it is they're trying to do and why right and you're and you and, and if you guys will get out of your own head and listening to you the voice in your head about what you're going to say next and is this going to go good and like focus on what they're saying a hundred percent. Oh man, it's a game changer. You will literally understand what the next move is to, to help this person and whatever it is they're trying to do. Um, yeah. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. Perfect. John lightning round go. Hey, so my question is when you were breaking into the seven figure, listing market, how did you overcome the objection to, hey, let me see how many houses like mine you've sold? Never, nobody ever asked me that. Really? Yeah, nobody ever okay. asked me that one single time. I've never heard that. So what happens is, is we start to imagine these questions that might come up that never do. All right, and, he, and, and, and John, let me, let, me, let, me, let me explain something to you. If you do get a question like that, that is the prospect. What's that? I said, which I have. Thankfully, okay. it's an email, so I haven't responded let me, yet. Let me tell you what that, is, what that means. It means I don't, I, don't, I don't like you. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm looking for something to use against you to tell you that's why I don't want to do business with you, when in reality, I just don't like you. See, see, see it's like there was, a, there was an agent that came to me, and they were like, oh, I lost this luxury listing because... Uh, my brokerage, the, 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 the seller came to me and said, Oh, we're going to list with you, but we want this other brand. That's like luxury brand. And I said, there's probably a 1% chance it was the brokerage, but it's 99% chance. And they don't, they, they're nice people. They don't want to tell you, they just like the other agent more, but 99% chance was they just didn't like you as much as the other agent, right? The fact that they like you is the number one reason why they do business with you. It's it. If you can create a situation where they like you, then you're going to do business with more people than other agents. Um, and so, like, I don't know what your communication was. You said email, email. I mean, I don't know if it's like a cold email or if you called them and then they emailed you or if you ever actually had a conversation where they heard your voice. Like, there's a lot of things that come into play here, right? But, um, but at the end of the day, when people come at me with, with stuff like that, what I finally realized is that's not really what they cared about. They were just looking for an excuse to not do business with me because they didn't like me. And it's not like I hate your guts and all this stuff and want, you know, want you to burn and stuff like that. It, nothing like that at all. It's just that they don't like you enough. They might like you. They just like you enough for you to represent them as their real estate agent, right? Does that make sense? 
So then we have to come yeah, back. It was, an, it was an inbound, though. That's that's what kind of threw me for a loop. This wasn't like an outbound on my part. This See, was there's an always inbound. exceptions to every rule. There's always exceptions to every rule. But the thing is, is remember, honesty is is the peak. Honesty is the peak. So a lot of times when people ask you those kind of questions, like let's just say you're a new agent, you haven't sold anything, and they say, hey, how many happy, how many properties have you sold? And you say, you look them right in their eyes, and you say, none. And that's why you want to do business with me. Because I'm going to spend every waking hour on your deal. Eight hours a day on your deal. If you want Mr. Ricky, 100 deal, 100 deal a year, Ricky, down the road, go down there and look in his eyes and, tell, and, and, and see where your deal is going to be on his priority list. Guarantee it won't be at the top and guarantee you won't be spending eight hours a day on your deal. I will. So if you want a hard worker, I'm your guy. If you want somebody who's going to make it happen, I'm your guy. Right? If you want a more experienced agent, I'm not your guy because I'm not experienced yet. And guess what, Mr. Seller? We can still be friends because I'm not trying to close you. I'm not trying to get the listing. I'm trying to connect and help people. If somebody decides they don't want to do business with me, that's what it is. I'm not going to do business with every single person. What do I do? I do the best I can do to make the best impression on who I really am by being authentic and honest. And then I let the chips fall. So you're talking about one prospect, bro, out of thousands and thousands that you're going to get in your career you know so what you do is you respond like you know what i would do i'd call him right then say hey here i am i'm john how you doing man you know if he'll answer you know you asked me how many properties i sold like like that i haven't sold any, any like that yet quite yet but I, i'm i'm ready to i'm ready to do one <laughs> you got one you got one for me because i'm ready i'm ready to get one under my belt right? Cool. Hope that helps. Jan, go for it. My question is in regard to the marketing of the property. Mm -hmm. I was lucky and we've got a $1.3 million listing coming up next week. And now I'm thinking of what would be the best option to market this house. You, um, I didn't catch the whole thing and, 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 and forgive me too. One second. People are asking stuff in the group. If the Facebook thing isn't working, if the, if the Facebook link isn't working for the uh, challenge, it's there. Um, I'll check the links on the back end, but just, just email me Ricky underscore Caruth at Yahoo. And I'll send you the link for that guys. And I'll be sending emails out and everything anyway. All right, Jan. So you having a problem uh, marketing a property, right? What is the best options? This is a very unique house that for handicapped people. Um, and I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, MLS. one of the things that I learned years ago is if you're looking to find someone to upsell, you usually go 40% less than the price when you're targeting an audience because they can probably afford it. Um, so are you, pri are you priced accordingly for that advice? That is the price, and that is a good price for 6,600 yeah, yeah, yeah. square here, here, feet. Here, here, here's the thing. I don't know if you'll like this answer or not. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if you will or not, but it's the truth, right? And even though you didn't pay me any money to be here, I still am not going to lie to you. All right? <laughs> so, like, it's in front of every single buyer right now. Anybody that goes on their phone and searches that property criteria, it's right there on the phone right there instantly a anybody who has a search set up for a property in that criteria it goes straight into their cranium the moment it hits the market what, what else can you do right you can't do anything else right you, you, if the we, listing you if, usually, if, we, if, we could, if we could make listings sell faster there would be no listings on the market every realtor would sell them within 60 seconds and they would be gone we have no control over when a listing is going to sell. I'm sorry, we don't. We could do some Facebook ads. We can post it on Facebook. We could do some open houses. I've yet to see any of that make a listing sell faster. Might you have got the lead from Facebook or from the open house that bought it? Yeah, sure. Would they have seen it online anyway and, and pursued it and bought it? More, more than likely. Um, you know, I'm not saying that it doesn't help. Sure, all that stuff helps. And the more brand and the more marketing you do for listing, yeah, awesome. Do all, I'm not saying don't do all that stuff. But what, I, but what I am saying is don't drive yourself crazy either 
about how to sell a listing because that listing is going to sell when it's ready, not when you're ready. You know, I mean, I, like I say, I, I started out with, I don't know if you'll like the answer, but it's the truth. Now I've been in business 33 years and I agree with most of what you just said. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, at least, as long Thank as you. we're, as long as we're mostly there, we're good. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Oh man. Let's see. Hands are piling up. Uh, let's see. Oh man. We got to go really fast. Uh, Manny. Thank you, Ricky. Uh, my question is, I'm doing a lot of expired to force sale by owner calls. And I always ask, you know, when they are listed, um, you know, when they become listed, you know, how did the, you, Mr. Seller, choose that agent? And a lot of them end up saying to me that, you know, the agent got in through the door by saying they had buyers for the property. Obviously, they didn't have buyer for the property because now it's listed. Right. Um, so my real question is. That. that doesn't mean they didn't have a buyer. Okay, maybe I'm they assuming it. I uh, um, could have had a buyer that wanted something in the subdivision and didn't like that house. Happens all the time. They could have had a, they could have had a buyer. And by the time they worked it out with the seller to sell it, that buyer bought something else or decided they wanted something else. Happens all the time. So you're right. They could have been. It could have been a make believe buyer. Sure, I'm with you. But we can't just automatically assume that either. No, and I and I'm not going to assume it for everyone of them but you know it just seems to me like and i'm really so, i want so, to keep so, my so many so many what is your question I, I, my question is uh about getting in the door with i have a buyer because technically i could say that my group that i'm, I'm associated with has buyers for your home right why but, would you do that? what manny why wouldn't you call them and offer them a better house To get your foot in the door. I mean, and then yeah, the I mean, I could definitely. And if, 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 if you have a buyer, if your group has a buyer, why not keep that under your sleeve instead of, instead of coming out and acting like every other agent? Why not keep that under your sleeve for a second, fill them out, give them something, see if it's a working conversation and rela possible relationship. And if, and if they say something about, uh, uh, possibly selling. Oh well, I might have a buyer. Knowing the whole time you got a you got a pretty strong buyer, but see now you're now you're under promising, over delivering instead of going right in with oh I got a buyer for your house. Now you're over promising, under delivering if that buyer doesn't perform. Dude, listen. Let me let me tell you and everybody else on the call something. Because I see where we're going with this. You're trying to figure out how to get your foot in the door. Let me tell you how to get your foot in the door. Learning how to talk to people. The, the, the simple, is this so-and-so? Great. This is so-and-so with whatever realty and whatever area. How are you doing today? Getting that down. Making them feel like you're their family. Like, who is this? Is this, is this, is this, is this, is this long-lost Johnny? I haven't talked to this guy. Is, is this my cousin? This person sounds familiar. This person sounds like family. This person sounds like somebody, my best friend from high school. Is this Johnny? I ain't talked to you in years. That, 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 that's what you got to do, man. Like, it don't matter what you say. It's how you say it. We've all heard that before. It's true. I don't care if you call them with a buyer. I don't care if you call them with trying to help them upgrade to a house. I don't care if you call ask them if they consider selling. I don't care. Anything works. It all works. It's not the strategy of, of what we're offering them per se. It's how we're talking to them, making them feel, making them feel like, like they're, they're the only person in the world that matters to you, right? If you can nail that, it don't matter what you say. Hope that helps, bro. Thank you. Lester. My question is, and you probably cover this next week, but how do you keep track of all these calls? Uh, is that a CRM what, or just what do you need to get why, why do you need to keep track of them? Just keeping track of the conversation. You don't have to. You know, if, if you're trying to be personal or Th this maintaining is, this is that personal where, touch. Okay, th this is where this is where eighty percent of things that, like, okay, 
Anybody on the call here that makes calls that literally tracks every conversation, you know everything that was said, have you ever went back to look at those conversations, right? Uh, we spend all this time inputting things into a CRM and we, we never use it. And nobody, I tell you, nobody cares if you remember their dog's birthday. So at the end of the day, it's the personableness isn't necessarily that you remember that their kid was graduating next year. It was how you talked. It's literally your tone of voice that you're talking to them the same way you would your spouse or your mom or your dad, that feeling they get. It's not, it's not a words thing. It's not a thing that you remembered stuff. It's a feeling they get when they're around you, either in person or on the phone or, or even emails. They just get this feeling that, wow, this person cares more than any other agent I've ever talked to. Right? Thank you, Ricky. And I, I just wanted to say for those that don't know, you know, you have great calls uh, recorded on uh, YouTube to yeah. follow, you know. Yeah. yeah. Thank I you. just, I never kept up with the conversations and stuff. And um, because I was so personable without it. Oh. Like and it. Um, I saw it as something that could hold me back. By spending by investing time there, that I would never get a return on that investment, you know. Yeah, good stuff, Anna. Oh my God, he's gonna have to Oh, hold on, let me mute everybody. Somebody's unmuted. Anna, were you did, were you trying to ask something, Anna? Oh, oh you're muted. I got Anna and Brigida, and then we're out of here, guys. So. Go ahead. You're you're muted, Anna. I just I can't hear anything. She I guess she can't hear me. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I'm sorry. Hi, Ricky. Sorry I came in late into the call. Okay. I'm actually a broker, 21 years in the business, five years with my brokerage boutique. Yeah. So I no branded, meaning I'm second realty group. I don't have like a big corporation or a big brokerage. That next step, even though I'm experienced, not to show up, okay, I'm experienced, I'm not shy to speak with anyone. I do the emails, I do the marketing, the content. I do have my all habits, meaning that calls, you know, like starting from the scratch, doing the daily calls, I don't do them. I have established clientele. So yes, I got, I have comfortable through the years that my clients call me once I get their listing or once I have they have a need, a buyer or a seller, I will deliver. I'll close every single deal that is on my table. Right. But so what's the that, problem? The problem is the next step on the higher upper level because I have always sold under 1 million. That's yeah. the reason I joined the call. Um, when it comes to luxury market, I, I'm having an issue because I'm a small boutique brokerage. So the competition in Miami, you know, I, I okay. swing against... The yeah. flow day. So um, you own the brokerage or you're just at a, at a boutique brokerage? No, I am a solo broker now. I have, I have a, I'm a broker. I have a brokerage established for five years. So, but, uh, but you own the brokerage, right? I am the brokerage. I am the broker. Right. Managing How many broker. agents do you have? No, now I have oh, five. You're just, are you just a solo, I'm a okay, solo just a broker now? Boutique. Got it. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, being the broker, that's there's a lot of responsibilities that take up a lot of time and don't really pay you a lot of money. So you have yeah. that problem to deal with. But outside of that, just talking about in general, your, your question here about um, not, what you have to understand is that competition is an illusion. Okay. Yes. Well, I, it's, I it's, don't go, I don't try to go. I never see myself that I have to be, let's say, you know, whatever, Sobeys or Keller Williams, or you can you name it. I was me. It's always being you, my brokerage. You don't. Yeah. You don't have. You don't have to be no, any never have. brokerage. Okay. Some people are going to do business with this agent over there, not because of the brokerage, because the agent. They might okay. pick their their. They did a survey, and it was like one percent of buyers and sellers pick the agent over the brokerage. One percent. Okay. One okay. percent. Um, okay. It was less than one percent. Um, the brokerage doesn't have anything to do with it. What it has to do with is, do they like you? Okay. Well, um, I, not to, you know, like I said, to brag or have an ego, but I have clients that have worked with me for 12, 13 years. Under, but here's the problem, and they though, come Anna, back. Anna, 
Anna, yeah. Anna, the problem is great. People like you. Awesome. I'm saying you're not talking to new people that own million dollar and up properties to make, to mm -hmm. help them like you. Yes. Correct. And there's, there's no competition at all preventing you from creating those relationships. Okay. There's nothing yes. stopping you from picking up the phone and saying, you know, hi, this is who I am. This is what I do. I got this nice house over here, blah, blah, blah. Whatever your, whatever your angle is, nothing okay. stops you. So if you're great, as you say you are, and, and people love you to death and you're awesome well, conversation and you're, awesome, and you're yeah. an awesome conversationalist, yeah. right? And you're able to create that instant rapport with people and you want to go to that next level. You're not just saying it and you want to put the work in and actually get down and dirty and get in the trenches. <laughs> Then, um, nothing, there's no competition stopping you from doing that. So I think you have a limiting belief that like, there's all this competition in Miami for all these. No, no, there's not because. No, I don't take that. I don't take it as, um, like I said, I always knew what I was getting myself into it. When they, when I became a broker and decided to open the brokerage after being working as an agent, I have no regrets. I have my best friend as my former broker. Yeah. I got tried to get recruited by you know, many companies because of my years in the, in the industry. And I decided to go this way, not because I want, I want a, a hard head and, and I have survived through the pandemic, through economy, interest rates. I'm still here standing because obviously my overhead is, is less, but that next level is the one that I'm having. No problem is that is my whole habits. I have I all habits already established yeah. for yeah. years. That's it. Yeah. You got it. Cool. I hope that helps. Well, let's see. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Joshua. Rick, what's up, brother? Turn your video on. There you go. Hey, man. Real, real, real hey, quick, uh, man. Real quick. Hey, dude, your stuff works. I don't even have a question. I knocked on somebody's door uh, a month ago. Uh, they didn't even care about who it was, marketing company. We took them a purchase contract, closed tomorrow. That's all I got to say. Stuff works out here in Hawaii. It's not rocket science, is it, bro? No, 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 no. But, you have, but, but here's to, uh, the thing, though. You got to get the principles down, right? Yeah. And you, need, you need to have, you need to understand the depths of, uh, you know, uh, below the surface around the principles and, uh, and the strategies. So that's what I'm going to cover next week in the uh, challenge. Thanks for coming on, man. P. Go ahead, P. P. L. V. Sorry, I didn't realize my name wasn't on there. Uh, Ricky, my question is, uh, how? What do we do aside from calling to get ourselves around people uh, that are in these million-dollar homes and op? What? What would you recommend? What other activities would you recommend that we do to have those conversations in person? Say, say again. So to be around people that are in homes other than just calling them. Why, why wouldn't you just call them? You just you sit in the comfort of your house or office, air conditioned, you don't move, and you literally can have as many conversations as you want from the comfort of your own home, sitting in front of your computer. Why, 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 why are you looking for something? I mean, is it like, is the grass green or something? Like there's nothing better. I'm trying okay. to figure out why you want something okay. different. I guess it's a mind thing. I thought maybe by being in person, uh, meeting people that, you know, are in these communities, I thought that perhaps um, would be better than just calling them on the phone. They don't know who you are. They don't know who you are when you meet them in person. <laughs> okay, I see where you're going. All right. I mean, like okay. Like I'll like next week in the challenge, I'll talk about the different levels of communication that 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 um establish trust. Um Okay. Right? But um there's something to be said for in person, sure. I get it. But then comes your your problem. See, I can sit right here and I can target I can target and I can literally talk to I could I could set the triple dialer up and I could dial 250 numbers in three hours and talk to 25 people that own million dollar properties and, and pick up 10 new clients today. 
right? I can yeah, do that right true. now today. And I can do that any day I want that I have three hours, to sit down and bust through 250 numbers, talk to 25 and pick up 10, you know, eight to 15 new clients that own million dollar and up properties. I can do that all day long. Um, I mean, for me, I want my business to grow really fast. I'm mm -hmm. not looking for like, if like, here, here's what I would say. You know, this works. Do this while you're looking for the in-person thing, right? And add that in-person thing to this. So like, if you're, if you're doing this three days a week and you're calling for two to three hours a day, and you're picking up, you know, 15, 20 extra clients a week. That's what we're talking about here, guys. 15 to 20 extra clients a week that don't million dollar and up properties that you literally got for a dollar. And so as we're doing that, um, and we run into this networking event where all the million dollar property owners are going to be there. Well, we go to it that night. We're not going to quit making calls. We're getting 15 to 20 new clients every week. We're just going to add that to the calls. Right? Prioritize the calls. Yeah. Go okay. ahead, Brigida, for the last question. Okay, so um, my question is, how do you start conversation on Reddux when you call expires and there's no name? It, it, it says owner or LLC. You go right into who you are. So normally on a call, you'll say, you'll say, hey, Mr. Johnson. They'll say, hey, this is Mr. Johnson. You'll say, hey, this is Brigida, wherever, mm -hmm. whatever realty and whatever area, how you doing today, right? Okay. When, they, when, when you call them and you can't pronounce their last name or it's an LLC or it says owner, as soon as mm -hmm. they answer, you're ready to fire. And, you, and they say hello and you say, hey, this is Ricky Carruth over at whatever real estate company, whatever area, how you doing today? You forget about their name part. You go right into the next part, but you have to be very, it has to be very, you know, confident, right? As soon as they okay. answer, it's like, hey, this is Ricky Carruth over whatever, whatever, you know, how you doing today? And you let them answer. Right. Cool. Okay. Me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Great. Well, listen, I want to take it too much of your time, but I see you were trying to sell this house on, on, you know, Smith lane. Mm -hmm. You know, I see it was for sale. Now it's not for sale. I'm trying to figure out what, what happened with that property. And then right then and there, they're going to say, Oh, I'm not the owner, or I don't know what you're talking about. Or, or yeah, we tried to sell it and this, you know what I mean? So if this is not the right person, They'll let you know somewhere in the conversation that this isn't who you're, you know, who are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for the owner of this property. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, I'm this person or that person, or I'm not or whatever. Right. Okay. So you just skip that first part where you're asking them who it is. You go right into who you are and you just kind of follow through as if nothing's going on. All right. Thank you. Good deal. All right. Hey, I enjoyed it, guys. Enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. This was so good. Hope you guys got a lot out of it. We went like a full hour on Q and A. I was not, I, I did not schedule for that. So, but I never leave. I never like to leave questions hanging either, um, because I know you guys need help. So I wanted to stay around for it. So anyway, appreciate you guys. Um, come on the challenge next week. It's going to be amazing. Setmorelistappointments.com. Let me know if you have any questions. Here to help you. Um, you guys keep crushing it. We'll talk to you soon. I love you. God bless.